Hi, Dr. Gamble here. Today we're going to go over an introduction to basic data analysis. While you've probably analyzed data before in different science classes, odds are pretty good that you could have done more than you were doing. One of our goals as biologists is to collect data and use that data to make inferences about the larger world. As a result, we tend to end up with large sample sizes and large amounts of data. The sheer volume of numbers can often be overwhelming. If I asked you to draw conclusions about this data set, you'd probably have a difficult time telling me anything useful. There's just too many numbers. Fortunately, statistics provides a useful tool when working with large amounts of data. Today, I'm going to talk about basic descriptive statistics and how we can use them to analyze our data. Descriptive statistics provide a useful way to summarize data by making large data sets more manageable, helping us see trends in the data, and making it easier to compare different groups of data to each other. The goal of this video is to explain these basic statistics and how you can use them to better understand your data. To be clear, I am not going to cover how to calculate these statistics. We'll cover that in another video. Let's start with a basic statistic that most of you have already heard of, the mean, commonly called the average. As you can see, we've got a collection of numbers here. What do those numbers tell us? If we calculate the mean, we can see that it's 5. This tells us the data points are spread out around our mean value, and we can think of 5 as the middle of the data set. That's a great starting point. We can now look at two different data sets and draw a comparison. Both of these data sets have a mean of 5. However, are the two data sets the same? No, they're not. If we only look at the mean, we will believe that these two data sets are identical. However, the data set on the right is more spread out than the data set on the left. It's important to note that mean is a starting point when analyzing data, but is not the end point. It's very, very important that in addition to the mean, we provide a way to measure the variability of our data. And we tend to do this with two different measurements, standard deviation and standard error. Standard deviation, abbreviated SD, is a measure of the variability of data around the mean. If the data is tightly grouped around the mean, the standard deviation will be lower. However, if the data is not tightly grouped around the mean, if it's spread out, the standard deviation will be higher. Another measure of variability is standard error, abbreviated SE. Standard error measures how closely the sampled mean from our data reflects the real mean of the population. Remember, our goal is to draw inferences about the real world from our data set. Another way of thinking of standard error is how likely is it that repeating the experiment will result in the same mean over and over and over. A small standard error means we would expect to get the same mean most of the time. A large standard error means the mean would vary tremendously between different experiments. So let's go back to our two data sets. As we already identified, the mean is identical, 5. However, the chart on the left-hand side showed would have a lower standard deviation and a lower standard error than the one on the right-hand side, reflecting the fact that the data is more tightly grouped around the mean value. So how can we use this information when analyzing our data? A common practice when analyzing data is to try to see if two different groups are similar or different. In the graph above, you can see the results from an experiment measuring bubble dome size of two different liquid soaps, Dawn and Ajax. We would like to compare the mean and determine if one soap creates larger bubbles than the other. As you can see, Ajax has a higher mean bubble dome size when compared to Dawn. At this point, most people would declare Ajax the winner and think they were done. But we have a problem. This data is only looking at the mean. It does not take variability into account. To address variability, we need to take the standard error into we do this by adding error bars to our graphs. First, we need to be careful about comparing this graph to the previous one. On the surface, this graph, these two means look much closer than they did previously. However, that's because we've changed the scale of the chart. This graph is simply zoomed out, but it is the same data that we were looking at before. If you look carefully, you can still see that Ajax has a higher mean value when, than compared to Dawn. 
So we have error bars, the white bars you see at the top of each graph, but we need to understand what the error bars are telling us. Error bars are a graphic representation of the variability of the data. Remember, standard error shows how likely you are to get the same mean if you did the experiment again. The error bars show the range of different means we are likely to get if we repeat the experiment over and over. We would expect the means to fall within the range shown by the error bars. So how can we use this information provided by the error bars? What we want to see is if the area covered by the error bars overlap when we compare the two populations. By looking at the area covered by the dawn error bars and seeing if it overlaps with the area covered by the Ajax error bars, we can draw some conclusions. If the two error bars do not overlap, then we can say that the two groups are significantly different from each other. Significantly different is a statistical term means our conclusions are backed up by statistical evidence. If the two bars do not over, or if they do overlap, then we would say that the two groups are not significantly different, even though the means might differ from each other. Because if we repeated the experiment, the error bars are suggesting that we are very likely that the means would shift around enough that it would alternate which one has a higher mean. So in this particular experiment, our conclusion would have to be that even though Ajax has a higher mean value than Dawn, that there's no significant difference in bubble size between the two groups. In conclusion, Always use descriptive statistics when analyzing your data. The mean is important, but don't stop there. Take variability into account, calculating standard deviation and standard error, and use error bars when comparing different groups of data.